Hey guys, welcome to the second Java Aspects development log. It's been a productive two weeks since the last episode, and here is what I've done since last time. Basically, it's just been continuing with what I've said in the first episode that I would do, and continuing through that. The first thing to do was part of that bringing Java Aspects up to date with the latest update thing that I was talking about before. Remember I mentioned how I had to do spawn eggs and texts and item files in every single update? Well, the other thing that I need to do that I didn't mention is updating sounds. Java Edition has block sounds that stay very consistent in their pitches, and Bedrock Edition by default likes to make them vary, so I have to go through every block sound set that a new update adds and fix the pitches. Then I also switch it over to using the Java Edition sound identifier names instead of the Bedrock ones for command purposes. And that took so long for this update for one main reason. 1.17 adds so many sound sets. I think like 30 sound sets added about or something. It's insane. There were only about 50 in the pack before. We nearly doubled the amount of sound sets just in this one update. A vast majority of my time between episodes was spent on just this one task, and I cannot understate how long it takes to do this. Every single time I update one block sound set, there are actually two entries. There is an entry in the interactive block sounds area and in the normal block sounds area. One of them is for stepping sounds and falling, and the other one is for breaking and placing and that sort of deal. Right off the bat, I'm actually adding two sound sets for every one sound set they've added. Then I have to add the Java Edition sound identifiers, which includes copying code from Java Edition sounds.json and then reformatting it to match Bedrock Edition sound definitions. Then I have to take those, make sure they're actually pitched correctly, and put them into a sound set twice. Then I repeat that about 30 times for this update, and that just took many many hours of work. I also went and added the sound events that are separate to block sounds, like putting a candle on a cake is a sound event, or using bone meal. Now those also match Java Edition, but just in pitches in something that, you know, most players probably won't even notice. So that was my biggest time sink over the last two weeks. But Fortunately, today I finally finished that, and I actually did find a bunch of bugs with the sounds in this update, but we can go over those later. That's just kind of a fun side fact. The other thing I worked on for this update is fully implementing Lucas's Java Parity Pack's item icons. This is something I mentioned last episode too, but today I can tell you that they are now fully implemented. So the first thing I did was add a new icon for the lightning rod, because Bedrock Edition's lightning rod is not shaded correctly or oriented correctly, so we'll just fix all those issues at once with a replacement image from Java. I also had to fix the stone cutter screen, because the stone cutter has a slightly different item rendering method than the normal item screens, which means that I needed to go through and change the code there too. Fortunately, this was one of those places where it was very useful to know how to manipulate UI code outside of just copy and pasting it, because I made some huge optimizations in file size from Lucas's version. He had a lot of extra repeat code of repeating the same aux IDs and item names from the UI common in the stonecutter file, and I just changed it so it references the UI common and tweaks just a few variables so that we didn't have to repeat all the same information again. I also tried to do that with the selected and unselected item variants in the UI common, but that didn't work, unfortunately. I could, I still have other ideas that I could try, but for now I'm just going to go with it is implemented properly. While implementing the item icons, I found this really bad issue with the loom where there were no banner patterns visible. And obviously my first assumption was, okay, the item icons broke it, just like they broke the stone cutter. So I go through and I'm trying to figure out what could have messed up the loom so bad. Because I didn't even touch the loom screen, but the thing about the Minecraft UI code is it all refers back to the common files, UI common, art assets common, those are used across all files. And when we're messing with so much stuff with item icons in UI common.json, 
uh, it could affect every single screen that has items on it in some way. So that was my first assumption, and I spent a while looking through the item code to make sure nothing was broken. And the thing is, the banner pattern binding was correct. There are three banner pattern bindings that go on an item rendered, and they are all there. So I could not figure out why the patterns weren't appearing in the loom, until I thought, you know what? Let's make sure it actually is the UI common file causing the issue. So I just renamed the file, reloaded the game to see if it loads without the UI common file. Will the loom work? And when I did that, all the icons disappeared, so I knew the UI common wasn't loaded. But guess what? The loom still didn't work. It was not broken because of UI common.json. So now I'm really freaking out because, okay, the loom screen isn't working at all. I have no idea what the issue could possibly be. It could be anywhere in the JSON UI. Or could it? So let's rename the whole JSON UI file. Just pretend that Java Aspects has absolutely no UI code in it. Do we still see the issue in the loom? And that was yes. So the issue was not caused by UI code at all, but you can probably see how I led you through that explanation why I would think that it would be the UI code. So the issue was actually that I was using an outdated banner patterns file, which was causing the banner patterns to be completely broken in the loom. So I got that up to date using a new file from Fixed Vanilla, thank you Late Lag MC, and now the banner patterns show up just fine. So with that, the item icons were fully implemented, every screen worked, there are a few pocket screens that use the chest icon where it disappeared because of the slightly different method we used for the item icon system, so I had to go through and manually fix those screens. But after those random pocket screens were fixed, and the loom and the stone cutter worked properly, the item icons were implemented. I'm only slightly apprehensive because they are laggier than I expected. There is a significant lag spike when you first open the creative inventory and when you try to search, and later when you open it there's still lag, but it's better. So I think I'm gonna plan to keep it, but I'll see how feedback comes in after the update goes out officially. So with item icons fully implemented and sounds complete, it was time to start fixing bugs. The first thing that is always visible on the screen is the hotbar text height being way, way too low. If you're in survival mode, it overlaps your hearts and your armor and it looks very bad. So I went back and changed the text height in the file. It is a few lines that you have to fix, and that was causing a big issue. All that it really took was some experimenting and comparing the it screenshots between Java Edition and Bedrock to figure out exactly how many pixels I had to move the text by. Once that was done, it was an easy fix. The pillagers, the pillagers that had no crossbow have crossbows once again. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last video. Pillagers had no crossbows. They were just kind of standing without crossbows, but they still shot. That was actually due to a previous feature I had tried to add where pillagers would render their armor, and on Java they don't render their armor. So I made it so that they wouldn't render attachables, which means that any items that attach to their body won't appear. And in the past update, when I added that, crossbows were not attachables, so they appeared fine, but the armor didn't. Since then, Bedrock changed crossbows to be considered attachables, which means that they disappeared because I had disabled attachables on pillagers. So after I fixed that, the crossbows reappeared. It was a one-line fix, very easy. And I also fixed their arm position using an animation controller because that somehow broke in Bedrock Edition a little while ago and the developers never fixed it, so I will. I re-implemented bed icons. This is separate from item icons. I had attempted to add bed icons through the item icon system that Lucas created, but as Minecraft's item ID aux system is very broken, when I tried they were very overlapping and glitchy and weren't working for bed icons, so I just re-implemented the current icons as bed textures, which means that when you hold them, they also show the same texture. It's a little different, but I didn't really like the way, and I still don't like the way that it looks when you hold it in your hand, so that's why I was trying to use the new system instead, and it didn't work, so I just undid that change. While implementing the new sound sets into Java Aspects, I found some interesting things. For starters, Candles do not have all their sounds on Bedrock Edition. They have nine ambient sounds on Java, 
and only three on Bedrock. They have five step and break sounds on Java. They only have three of each on Bedrock. Why? I don't know, but that's a super easy fix to implement for me, so whatever. So I added candle sounds from Java. Then one of my favorite things happened in the very latest version. In the newest beta, they have added three new block sound sets. Comparator for comparators, Dirt with Roots for rooted dirt, and Candle for candles. Obviously, I just talked about implementing candle. Then I also implemented Dirt with Roots, but it turns out that sound set is currently broken, so it doesn't even work properly in the game. That's one of the bugs I found. But the comparator sound set is interesting. Why would the comparator need an extra sound set when it just uses wood sounds like repeaters and planks and everything else? Well, it turns out the only difference between the comparator sound set and the wood sound set is the pitch of the on and off entries. That's because when you toggle a comparator on and off, it uses lower pitched sounds than normal levers. So they added a separate sound set for comparators. Here's the thing. The normal wood sound set is never used for power on and power off sounds. So if we just move that little pitch shift down for the power on and power off to the normal wood sound set, we can have the comparator still sound correct. And we also just cleared up a sound set that is now used for nothing. Because if the comparator doesn't need it, then the comparator sound set is empty. So I love empty sound sets because whenever there's a duplicate sound set, you can add a different sound set from Java Edition. I have used this in the past to add kelp and seagrass sounds, and in this update I'm also adding crop sounds using that same method. But in this very latest beta, we can add a third sound set. So I chose to add vines from Java Edition. The breaking and climbing sounds are different, they're the ones with the biggest difference from the bedrock sounds, and they sound a lot nicer than the rough grass sounds when you place vines down. Now, why is there a duplicate sound set? I'm not sure. I understand the comparator one, but in the Nether update, they added a Roots and Weeping Vines sound set, and both of those were the same. The Roots and Weeping Vines used the same sounds, so I just made everything use the Weeping Vines sound that used the Roots sound, and then Roots was open, so I switched it to Crops. That's why Crops can have sounds in this update. And then for the wet grass sounds, the Kelp and Seagrass, I was able to replace the default sound set with the stone sound set because by default, if you don't define a block's sound set, it will use stone sounds. However, you can just define all the sound sets in blocks.json and then nothing uses the normal sound set. So I did that. Everything that previously didn't have a definition like the elements is now just stone, which means that nothing uses the normal sound set so I could apply it to kelp and seagrass. Uh, I really like these workarounds. They seem clever. It's like slipping more information through than you're supposed to be able to fit. This did cause one issue in the last update, though. For one, there were a few blocks I forgot to set to the stone sound set, like sandstone stairs and the ender chest, so they sound like wet grass currently in the pack, and that is for sure a bug. And then also, a more peculiar one happens when you jump on boats, jump on scaffolding, and jump on lily pads. It plays the normal sound set instead of the scaffolding sound set, or the lily pad grass sound set, or say whatever the boat is supposed to be assigned to. It just plays the stone sound normally. But when I replace that with wet grass, it's a lot more obvious. So, my solution is a little weird. I just made the step sound for wet grass be scaffolding. Now, why does this work? Well, kelp and seagrass cannot be walked on. There is no placeable block that uses wet grass sounds, so the step sounds are basically unused. So what I did is I replaced the step sound for the normal sound set with the scaffolding step sound. The advantage of this is the seagrass and kelp still sounds the same, but when you jump on a boat or jump on scaffolding, it now makes the right sound. The only casualty with this solution is the lily pad, because lily pads are not made of wood, so when you step on them and you hear the scaffolding noise, it sounds a little weird, but this was the best solution. When boats, scaffolding, and lily pads are 
all controlled by the same source, it's a little hard to make the steps sound perfect for all of them. Stone was perfect for none of them, wet grass was perfect for lily pad maybe, but scaffolding is good for boats and scaffolding, and that's the best compromise I can get. Finally, let's go over some of the funny, sound-related bugs that I discovered while making this update. So I found that drip leaves, even though they have tilt up and tilt down sounds in the files, only use tilt down sounds right now. So I fixed that, obviously. And also, the deep slate bricks reference a step six sound that doesn't exist. So if you are walking on deep slate bricks and you sound like you suddenly forgot to put your foot down at one point, that's because it tried to play a sound that isn't in the files. Now, developing Java aspects is fun, but I really hate reloading the game because every single time I do it, I have to see this picture of the marketplace with Gru and the minions on it, and I swear I was going to go postal if I saw another minion on the main menu screen. So I took a little detour from developing aspects for a few days and worked on marketplace hider instead so that I could so I could keep working on aspects without losing my mind. Marketplace Hider was very easy to update. I redid all the code, actually, but that didn't take as long as you'd think. It only really took a few hours of work. And now I can once again play Minecraft without advertisements all over it. I'm not going to release this update yet because it actually doesn't work on the beta. For some reason, Minecraft is changing the UI files a lot in random places in the next update, and I don't know why. If I released it now, it would become outdated in just a few weeks, so I'm just going to wait until an update comes out that breaks all the UI files so I can fix it in Marketplace Hider and then release it, and I won't have to worry about it breaking later. That was a long devlog, wasn't it? I really need to work on keeping these shorter, but when I do so much in two weeks, it's kind of hard to condense it to a very short video. I hope you're enjoying the devlog so far. I'll continue working on Java aspects for the next two weeks. It shouldn't be long now. I'm just focusing on bugs. Everything that I needed to do for this update so far is done. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up fully implementing Lucas's Java parody pack into this pack before this update, like I said last episode, because there's a lot, and I need to get this update out fast. Realizing that I still have to deal with console aspects too made me think, yeah, I need to cut myself off with features even earlier than I thought. So for now, I do want to tell you all, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.